but just on dice in general, do you leave them with their maximum value up, random, or the middle value? I I I used to I used to dump them out and then draw from the <laughs> lowest I could find to the highest, and that was how I determined which die I was rolling. Wow. But then I that's that is now why I just like pick up a big handful and whichever one stays. So now it's now it's very random. Very. <laughs> but yeah, I do not I don't I do not put them down on the one or the max. Mm. Is yeah, it like bad purposefully. Juju? It's it's bad juju in my book. Yes. Wow. I always put them on the higher ones because then they roll the high ones. No, no, that's, no. no. I've never had no. a problem with this. Well, I, I unless have. you're keeping them in a warm room for a long period of time, then technically you're loading your dice. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I bake my dice. I have I have learned through total superstition and conjecture, you know, not through science or probability, that my dice will tell me whether or not I'm making good decisions or not <laughs> by rolling well. Or rolling really poorly. <laughs> that that is absolutely true. Yes. See. So yeah. Yeah, I completely agree. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Oh hi. So we're going to be role playing <laughs> live, not just recalling it today. Um, we're going to be yeah, we're not, <laughs> yeah, right onto YouTube with this. No, we are going to do some editing, but um, we're going to do just a, a, a session of Buffy the Vampire. You got the book, Buffy the Vampire Slayer, the role play. Um, we've featured it on the show before and, uh, you know, role-played off-camera type of thing, but this has actually proved a very versatile and fun system. It uses uh, the D10, just one, so that's all you'll see them using, um, whichever one's luckier for them in the moment. <laughs> and uh, that's where we're going to start. Uh, can you, would you introduce your characters? I am playing Rob Carmichael. He's a private investigator in Chicago. I'm Anita Longerman, his plucky assistant slash sidekick. Awesome. And I will be playing the, the storyteller. So uh, the fate of um, the fate of Robert and Anita are in my hands. Awesome. Okay, let us begin in true Buffy fashion. There is a dark alleyway. Chicago. It's late at night. There's a thump of a party nearby. And as the bass drones on, someone comes out of the back, looking a little disheveled. Young, youngish woman, in their teens, you know, like late teens. And she is clearly under some kind of weird influence. She walks by a couple of guys to kind of give her a once over and then just keep walking because she's so clearly a little too trashed. But as she makes pleading eyes toward one, he pauses and looks back. She goes, help. He says he'll catch up with his friend, kind of wanders over and says, well, help with what? Suddenly there's a tap on his shoulder. Turns, and there's a, there's a voice that says, I don't think you're the help she's looking for. A sudden scream and cut to black. Okay, so Robert, yeah, you are in your office. Mm -hmm. It is not a pretty sight. Mm. Okay, <laughs> the paperwork has piled up. Let me tell you, you knew being a private investigator was going to be so much easier than working for the cops, but you did not realize that you'd have to take care of literally every piece of paperwork in order to make sure you're on the level. Like, yeah. Oh, it's so annoying. Mm. If only Anita were here. Uh, yeah. That'd be nice. I open the door. Hold there your lunch bag. Drop it off. Lunch and coffee, boss. Oh, thank you. Long uh, night? Yes. <clears throat> this is wonderful. Thank you so much. I live for those words. <laughs> mm. Okay. Do we have any messages? There's two messages on your uh, machine. Mm. Fantastic. Hi. Have you thought of the implications of not voting in this year's election? Next. Um, hi, Mr. Carmichael. We, uh, we, we, we're we still going to be coming for that meeting today. We're just going to be running a little late. But thank you. Okay. 
<laughs> when were they supposed to arrive again? They are 4 o'clock, sir. Gotcha. Okay. And it is about 4.50 right now. Gotcha. Okay. They're a little behind. A little behind. <laughs> I understand. Okay, well. And the phone rings. Oh. Hello. Hey, Robert. It's Johnson here. Hey, how are you? Oh, not too bad. Um, Say, uh, I'm going to be running the late shift tonight. Uh, was there anything you wanted me to keep my ear to the street for? Not yet, but there's a meeting coming up soon. I might need some help with that. All right. Just let me know. Will do. Later. And to give you a sense of time, it is uh, 1992, so he's going to be hitting up the phone every once in a while, giving you a call. Right. Um, okay. Only Sounds when it's good. along his route, you know. Right. Mm-hmm. Okay. So... Let's say five o'clock is just about there. Okay. You want to... Okay. Got the door. I'll tie the paperwork. You good? Yep. Yep. Hi, welcome to Johnson and Johnson's Private Detectives. How can we help? Jo- Johnson and Johnson. Johnson and Johnson. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yep. Yeah. Well, I'm here to meet with Mr. Carmichael. Yep. Right that's here. that's me. Hi. <laughs> All right. And in walks this middle-aged woman. You know her from your previous phone conversations. Mm-hmm. This is Henrietta Youngberg. Henrietta. Yep. She is the mother of... She's the mother of Dana Youngberg. Okay. And that who is who they are concerned about. Gotcha. She's come with some uh, information, uh, more personal information. She just had the phone call uh, initially with you, so this is where you're getting more info on gotcha. Dana. Gotcha. Gotcha. I just, I did not realize the traffic coming into town would be so bad. Um. <laughs> yep, no, the rush hour, the rush hour starts early and ends late. Oh, yeah. Here, have, have a seat. Okay. She has a seat. Yep. Anita, could you get us some, do, would you like some coffee? Oh, yes, please. Right. How do you take it? Um, black. All right, look at yeah. Sorry, I, I don't know why I was, I have something to say, so on that, it's. You know, it's you're under a lot of pressure. Yeah. We get it. Let's copies, cookies, and a box of tissues. Ah, thank, thank you very much, Anita. Thank you. Ah, okay. So, as I was telling you over the phone, mm-hmm. um, over the weekend, uh, Dana said she was coming here to visit a friend, and mm-hmm. and uh, it was a friend that apparently that you know she she had known in junior high. She moved to Chicago and. And then she's like, hey, he's just come for a visit for the weekend. And I'm like, oh, the, she was nice back then. And I haven't heard from her since. Okay. When was the last time you heard from her? Um, when she she called when she was filling up at a gas station here. Okay. Um, saying that she had gotten to Chicago and she was going to be meeting uh, June downtown. Gotcha. Meeting June. Yeah. Um, there are a couple different... Uh, places they talked about, but she said there was this, this one place that just had a hilarious name, uh, Bootylicious. Oh yeah, I know that place. <laughs> All right, excellent. And uh, roll your uh, no- let's see, knowledge and intelligence, Craig. All right. It's plus ten. Twenty. Oh yeah, you you recall the sting or two around there. This is yep. a vampire bar. Awesome, yep. Yeah. That was under a really good, uh, you know, strip club kind of cover, though. Right. So the public isn't as willing to be engaged with that and sees, you know, seedy behavior and repercussions of that as a little more normalized coming right. from there. And, and here, here's, here's a headshot of her. Um, Excellent. It looks like it was her student fo- uh, photo from previous year, so like it. You have a lovely daughter. Thank you. Yes. I wish that I had the number of this friend she was supposed to be saying that. They were gonna, she was going to give that to me when she got to the friend's house, and that, that the last I heard from her was at the gas station. All right. Do you remember which gas station that was? Did she tell you? Uh, she said a Texaco. Texaco? Yeah. Okay. Uh, do you know the highway that she used to come into town? No, oh, unfortunately. Um, she said she was uh, uh, coming up that, that main one that goes through the... the I'm so sorry. No, it's fine. Take your time. I'm from Indiana. We don't get up here that often. Okay, that that helps. Okay. 
Do you know about what time she called? It was Friday, like uh, seven o'clock. Okay. okay. Yeah. She took off after school, um, so she got here around that time. Okay. Very good. Uh, did she give you June's address? Or she was hazy on it. She was gonna call when she got there. Right. And a neighbor. The more, the more I hear myself say it out loud, the more I, I, I sound like a complete bimbo. Oh my god. No, no, it's it's not it's not okay to dwell on those sorts of thoughts. We have. I know plenty of bimbos. I know you don't sound like them. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Now we've got to focus on what we can do, not what could have been done. Yeah. Yep. Okay. So, should she say a neighborhood? I'm going to have. Oh, let's see. Anita, you were basically trying to influence and calm her down, right? Yeah. So, roll your intelligence influence. Hold on. You said plus intelligence? Plus intelligence and influence, yeah. Yeah. 24. Oh, sorry, 25. 25. Yep. The right woman for the job on that. Mm -hmm. She's gone from getting toward inconsolable to, you know, you're right. I. She's going to be 18 soon. She's... She's going to be going out into the world, and, and I can't kick myself for letting her be an adult. Nope. Thank you. You're welcome. This coffee's delicious. I'm sure it is. She Place makes a really okay. good cup of coffee. <laughs> <laughs> she seems to be calmed quite a bit now. Okay, excellent. This okay. Is okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so she called you. On Friday, around 7, mm -hmm. from the Texaco, on the highway coming in from... Oh, uh, uh, interstate. The interstate, it was, it was yes. interstate coming in. Okay, excellent. Excellent. Okay. And she was marking the tolls around this. The interstate are just horrible. All right, okay. It, it's every, like, mile. They charge 85 cents. What in the world's the point of that? <laughs> Pay for the whole lot, right? <laughs> I, you know, we wonder that ourselves all the time. Okay. She's so funny. She is is funny. Is yes. Thank she is positive. funny. All right. Excellent. You're sure you can find her? We're going to do our damnedest. Okay. Okay. Again, let's go back to what you know about June. Okay. Did she mention a neighborhood? And at this point, I will not. I will tap out. My knowledge of Chicago neighborhoods is very bad. Um, I have none. No, so. no, that's okay. So let's just <laughs> let's You're pretend nice. that we know something and say, oh, it's this neighborhood that is somewhat nice, but somewhere on the edge of bad. Sounds good. Mm -hmm. Sounds good. Okay. Cool. Okay. This is excellent information. Very, very good. Okay. So you have our phone number. You are capable of getting a hold of us. If you think of anything else, do not hesitate to call. Okay. Yes. Uh, we'll do that. Um, all right. So will I, will I? Will I hear from you by Wednesday? We will call with daily updates. Awesome. Yes. Okay. Thank you. You're uh, I welcome. Get, I better get on the road if I want to get to my hotel. <laughs> yes. <laughs> well. Henrietta is now uh, leaving your office. Yep. Bye, Miss Youngberg. Close that. All right. Okay. Um, how about you get out a map of the city, and I will call up Johnson, see if he's still at his desk. Sounds good. I'll grab your map. Do you and want me to talk to any of the girls down there? Or? I might um, have a few still in my black book. Yeah. You know, let's let's start let's start hitting that up. Okay, fantastic. All right. Roll initiative for whose uh, lead goes first. <laughs> go I got her way to do the initiative. <laughs> I have those five. <laughs> <laughs> uh, right. What do I have? Four. <laughs> uh -huh. By default. No way. No, I do have plus five to initiative. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Perfect. For those playing along at home, initiative in Buffy is almost entirely a meaningless skill oh, yes. because so much of it is situational. About the only time a mission would come into play is if there are two people who want to act at the exact same time, and then they'd roll off that. It's basically yeah. like two people trying to get into one doorway. Hmm. Yeah. After you, my dear Alphonse. <laughs> Dudley. <laughs> All right. Give me your corner ladies a call. Yes. The ones who specifically worked at or near Bootylicious. 
Oh, okay, the bootylicious uh, lot. Okay. Yeah. I believe the. Uh, oh, hi. Mm. <laughs> hey, hon, uh, how's it going? Oh, I'm so hungover. Oh, my God. Oh, I could imagine. Do I need to make a cure? Um, okay, what do you want? <laughs> uh, no offense, good. babe. It's just that's the only time you call anymore. Oh, I understand. I, I can. I, you know me. Take a moment and all. <laughs> I still can't envision it, but all right. Neither can he, apparently. <sighs> Anywho, Bobby and I have got a case, and I could use your help. Okay. You, um, were you working mm. at the Bootylicious on Friday? Uh, yeah, I actually had uh, the, the mid-shift. I got to go home by 11. It was nice. Yeah, it's always a fun time. You get to do some moonlighting while you're at it. Mm-hmm. Mm. Anything fun? Um, uh, you know, a little here and there. Oh. Um, I mean, we had a pretty interesting client, actually. Oh, yeah? Um, um, Henny? Henny. One of, he's a new player on, on the, on the bank scene. Hmm. He's, he seems interesting. He, he's carrying a very close circle with him. Okay. A lot of groupies. Um, you know, the thingies. Mm-hmm. Yeah, some of them are really young, though. Girls or boys? Girls. Oh. All of them girls. I mean, not, not like child young, but I'd, mm -hmm. I'd want to see their ID for letting them in a place like that. But you know how the Bootylicious runs. I do, I do. Yep. Good money though when you're young. Yeah. Oh, those days. <laughs> oh. I tell you, 24 hits harder every single morning. Oh. Oh, trust me, at that point, I've got knees of a 30 year old. <laughs> so I start going on the back. Uh, we can hang out more, you know that? We really do. It's been a while. Awesome. Well, anything else uh, can I answer for you? Uh, if you could keep an ear out for a girl named Dana, I'd be appreciative. Dana. Yeah, okay. something about a... You got a description? I've got a picture I can send it to. Okay. In the mail? Or what are you talking about? No, I'll just send it down the chain. Oh, okay. Thanks. No problem. Oh, um, one more mm -hmm. thing. Yeah? Um, run the name June through a list. It sounded somewhat familiar and I can't figure out why. June. June. Yeah. Oh, oh, she's she's one of the ghouls. That's what I figured. Yeah, yeah. She spends uh, quite a lot of her time down there making the rounds at the tables. I think she's just trying to find uh, the, the one to stick, but mm. uh, she's <laughs> just getting passed around by, by the, the fangs uh, quite gotcha. a lot. Um, been busy the last like four months with really? that. Really? Yeah. Hmm. Thanks. No problem. See you, Trigger. I go get the map. Alrighty. I call the police station to see if Johnson is there. Ring, ring. This is Johnson. Hey, Johnson, it's Bob. Already? All right. <laughs> yeah. No, the meeting showed up shortly after our phone call. Okay. Okay. So, we're looking for a girl named Dana Youngberg, 17. Oh, no, kidnapping? Possibly. Oh, great. Okay. Uh, she was last seen, well, her mom last talked to her at a Texaco on the interstate coming into town around 7 o'clock Friday night. You can pull and the pay phone records there. Excellent. Thank you. Uh, it'll be an outgoing call to Indiana. Okay. And uh, she was going to meet her friend June, and they were going to go to Bootylicious. The strip club? Mm-hmm. Then it's a 17-year-old. Yeah. Okay. Because, you know, we, <laughs> we've, had a, we've had some eyes on that place. They run their business clean. I don't think that they would get in. Okay. Well. But we could. I could kind of put some feelers out and see if there was any uh, presence that shouldn't be down there. Okay. Uh, <laughs> okay. You're always going to get a couple of outliers, some of fake IDs, and maybe that's what... They snuck in with. Uh, right. Right. Dina's a... Okay, so we got girls going into a strip club. Uh-huh. Okay. Or at least being near there. 
this may not be the, the, you're thinking you're thinking sex ring oh uh, i'm trying to stay positive right now because oh, that's gonna suck to explain to her mom you know i'm gonna see if uh we got anyone working a case on them right now because as i said been on our radar but so far nothing hinky but, okay uh, yeah i i'll i'll ask uh, uh god who was that junkins yeah junkins was the one that was looking into that okay I'll give him a ring if he's still in the office. Otherwise, yeah, I'll put out some feelers. You got a photo? Yeah, I do. Um, and I will and describe... And she's been missing since Friday, huh? Friday was her last known you contact really with the mom. really get her mother to file an official missing persons. I, I know, will. I know you kind of want to take lead on this, mm -hmm. but get us involved as much as you can. Can do... Can her man. mom's on her way to the hotel right now. Okay, if she gets in contact with you again, tell her to get us involved. Yeah. I mean... I can leave a message for her at the front desk. All right, thank you. Okay, and I will describe Dana to Johnson as okay. per the photo. Perfect. All right. And it's an old photo. Just fax over aware? a copy so we can uh, put it on the... You know, once once she files a missing person, we'll have everything ready when she does. Will do. Okay. And if you send anybody new down there... Tell them to be careful. I've heard that there's been some real, real seedy behavior down there. Well, sounds like I might have a prostitution ring or something. I mean, I mean beyond that. Yeah, just tell them to be careful. Yeah. This is your... Oh, okay. The thing that you're still trying to convince me is bigger and actually exists. Okay, yeah. gotcha. Yeah. You know what? I'll play the better safe than sorry card on this one. Thank you. And say be on the lookout for anyone who looks violent. How does that sound? Good good yeah. idea. Violence vague. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. Cool. Well, thank you. Thank you. Click. Okay. Um, Here's the map, sugar. Uh, thank you very much. Uh... Did Henrietta tell us which hotel she was staying at? No, no. she did not. Awesome. <laughs> That's why I was kind of like, Whoa. you were going to ring the front desk, I see. Yeah. <laughs> Should have asked that I question. she's at the Marriott. Yeah. <laughs> she's at the Waldorf. <laughs> okay, well, not doing that. <laughs> um, they have fantastic salads. Meats, yes, I've heard that too. <laughs> All right, okay, so map here. Mm -hmm. Um... Interstate coming into town from Indiana, lots of toll booths. Mm -hmm. Which you do see one um, that kind of swoops down through. Okay. And it's before the curve that goes over the north part of town. Okay. And minimal tolls before there are uh, two separate exits that have uh, Texaco's near them. Gotcha. One of which is near uh, that kind of good getting towards the part of town. Gotcha. Okay. Excellent. Yes, I should have made you roll for all of that. But I looked at your intelligence and knowledge and the fact that you're <laughs> local from the area, it would not take a right. brain surgeon to narrow that down. Right. Yes. Okay. So quick pause. That is another thing that I love about the system. It literally says, if you don't feel you need to roll it, don't roll it. So it speeds up the natural flow of the roleplay so much. It, it is such freedom. Not only from a DM perspective, I mean would you guys say that it speeds up the game a lot compared to other ones, too? Yes. Yeah, my yes, it does. I, DM. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Aside from my sidetrack, there we go. You now have a pretty good idea that's where you're going. Right. Okay. Excellent. How was your phone call? Um, you know, Johnson is still reluctant to accept the truth, but he's going to... Uh, He's gonna help us out. He okay. wants a, he wants Henrietta to file an official missing persons report. Well, yeah. Yep. Yep. You know, I just hope we can get someone some good news. Well, I've got good news. Oh. I have an idea in June. Ooh, fantastic. She's a ghoul. Not fantastic. <laughs> yeah. Okay. And there's a new fang around town. It's all happened around Bootylicious, isn't it? It really is. Awesome. Okay. His name is Henny. Okay. And he likes younger girls. Oh. He has an entourage of them. Not so young that they're not child, but... Right. 
I would say between 16 and up, so to speak. Fantastic. Um, okay. Yeah. Okay, cool. Um, what day is it today? Monday. Monday. Awesome. Well, want to head down there tonight? <laughs> Are you asking me out? <laughs> Every single night. <laughs> <laughs> oh, of course. All right, fantastic. Um, While I was transcribing, who was your love again? Mine? Yes. Uh, mine is uh, someone who doesn't know he exists. Mm. It's a... It's a love from afar sort of thing. Gotcha. Yeah. It's someone It's someone he helped out with like a stalker boyfriend a while back, and he got a little too involved. Does someone and, have a name? Uh, I'm sure she does. Let's say Sarah. <laughs> I started with an S, so I was pretty sorry. Oh, fantastic. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Thank you. Yes. Yeah. Love is okay. a drawback in uh, Buffy the Vampire Slayer. <laughs> Unrequited love is even worse. Yeah. <laughs> it's like a curse. What? <laughs>